Yo, what's going on everybody? Hey, it's Jason and today we've got a Panzer Fight Stick build that is going to feature some printed plexi artwork. The Brook Universal Fighting Board Fusion, some Sanwa parts. This is the new JLX adjustable micro switched lever here and uh, an accessory pack that is uh, going to go into it. So let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> Hope everyone's Sunday is going well. I woke up, I mowed some grass, I cultivated some lawn, and I spread some seed to hopefully get some new grass growing on the side of my house. Fingers crossed. All right. Oh, this one's already open. Cool. What's going on, Regent of Origin? Welcome to the stream. All right, check this out. Oof. We, uh, we've got the whole basement reno done. I am very comfortable working down here now. There's no... Uh, concrete that I can see. There is no studs, just me surrounded by shelves of arcade parts and a nice build table with everything properly rigged up and looking good, so that makes me happy. All right. <clears throat> so a pretty, a pretty solid Sunday for me to start. I'm pretty happy so far. Although it's only uh, 1 o'clock, I guess the day is still young and it could go downhill. We'll see. <clears throat> now, in lieu of all of the drama surrounding the Hitbox licensing drama this week, it'd be super funny if to, if anything else, just to irritate folks, to build a, a all-button controller or a leverless controller. But today, alas, no, we're going to build a Sega 2 player because that's what I've got some artwork for. So that's what we're going to use. It's all good. But we are going to build in this nice red case. Uh, as you saw at the beginning of the stream, there is some art over there that we will use. Use that. We can go ahead and just set all this off to the side here and go ahead and get started. So, since uh, I did say we we're going to talk about this hitbox licensing thing, let me look this up because I actually haven't looked at it. I just saw their, their um, tweet and I was like, yeah, no thanks, bro. <clears throat> let's see hitbox arcade license i'm just googling it let's see what i can come up with all right hitbox licensing program all right we're going to read this together hitbox licensing program we at hitbox have been part of the fgc for well over a decade now and it's been a wild journey of ups and downs fostering our simple loverless design i like how they're trying to incorporate loverless into this since that's what everyone started calling these once they got their panties in a wad in a room dominated by sticks, Hitbox could not have made it this far without the incredible support of our customers, friends, and fans who believed in our design long before anyone else would touch a controller made out only of buttons. Well, I would argue that many controllers have had all buttons. The D-pad on a lot of controllers are literally individual buttons, but okay. Uh, and while it was a community fringe for so long, an entire leverless industry has blossomed from the Hitbox, bringing in many new controllers in all different shapes and sizes that utilize the classic hitbox layout. Meh, maybe. It's grown to the point now that there's a vast and almost overwhelming landscape of leverless options. Yes, that's called capitalism. Some of these controllers are of great quality. Yeah, the Panzer's pretty good. While others simply are not. Hmm, not sure what that's supposed to mean. In that light, we would like to bring welcome the best into the light hitbox licensing program. Okay. Our goal is to alleviate quality issues to the consumer by endorsing the most deserving controllers, big and small. We do this with the same care as we hold our own flagship products. I've used Hitbox stuff. They're not that good. So if that's their bar, it's pretty low. The customer's experience is of utmost importance from the moment they unbox their controller through trusting its quality for years to come. Our dedication to our customers and community is the foundation of the Hitbox licensing program. Hmm our protected intellectual proper property. This is where I think most of the rub comes. When we developed the Hitbox in late 2010, we believed its design was the future of fighting games and made the decision to apply for a patent on its own unique button layout, which by the way, I've seen the patent because I had a friend who worked at the patent office and she dug it up and sent it to me. It's, I mean, it exists. I don't think it's defensible, but it exists, but I'm not a lawyer either. We aim to share the use of that intellectual property with the well-deserving companies who share the same customer-driven values as our own. Hmm, okay. I'm not sure what that is. I think most of their stuff is always out of stock, and looking inside, eh, I don't know what they would consider well-deserving, but that's up to them. 
Licensing provides our company with the ability to share our IP, <coughs> monetize, without the worry of other companies damaging it, <coughs> making money, without giving them any money. Through the licensing program, we can officially endorse and collaborate with other high-quality companies and manufacturers. Well, I'll tell you, their collaboration's not that great. When I asked them to share a vector of their overlay so that I could help a customer out and do a printed plexi for them, they politely said no, which was awesome. So I don't necessarily think they're super community-driven like they're trying to say. Uh, additionally, we can also help ensure that every player's experience on a leverless controller is a positive one. How? If I license it and I completely do something different, or I just drill holes in accordance with the willy-nilly layout that they've come up with, it may not work for everybody, so I don't know how they can judge that. This page is an overview for those interested in learning about the Hitbox licensing program and the standards of quality and customer service we look for in an applicant. What is licensing? All right, this is boring. I'm not going to read that. Licensing grants use of our patents. Whatever. I would... Uh, if I was made of money, I would be glad to welcome that lawsuit. Uh, blah, blah, blah. The products we choose to license undergo heavy testing and must abide by our two primary values, controller quality and customer service. Well, maybe they should test their own stuff a little bit better because it's basically trash, in my opinion. In my professional opinion of making controllers, I don't think their stuff is very good. I've always been very annoyed by most of it. Uh, core values. This is hilarious. Joey Queller getting kicked out of Evo, anybody? When a customer purchases... Oh, and going back, uh, we choose undergo heavy testing, a.k.a. they want to take all of our controllers that we send them uh, if we license them and look at them and potentially use them for design inspiration uh, because I know they're not going to try and buy one of these. They want to squeeze money out of us to get a license and then they want to have us send product to them so they can test it and potentially use it for their own free R&D? Unlikely. You can buy it from me if you want to steal from me or borrow my ideas. Okay, controller quality. When a customer purchases an official hitbox, we want them to have the best experience possible when placing it on their lap for the first time. The buttons feel nice. It's Sanwa buttons you use. They all feel nice. The controller has good balance and stability. Okay. It feels durable enough to survive a flight to the next major. I think Sheldon took his hitbox and actually twisted it in his hands. And most of all, that the customer can trust it in their next tournament match. Well, that's all based on the circuit board inside. Customers have a to, excuse me. Customers need to have the same level of confidence in licensed hardware as Hitbox expects from its own hardware. Again, no, I think their standards are too low. We believe in the integrity of a licensed product's quality must meet the same standards of our own. That's a pretty low bar. Products we choose to license undergo heavy testing and must meet our standard of quality and service. Again, I think that's a very low bar. Customer service. Problems happen. Above all else, we at Hitbox try to ensure every customer is assisted with their controller needs. Companies participating in the Hitbox licensing program must strive for the same type of responsiveness, care, and detail that our customers come to expect. It's required that you, the manufacturer, show good faith in maintaining a positive experience for everyone involved. That's called the free market. If I don't provide good customer service, that shit gets out. People know. All right, uh, level system. It was created to be as inclusive as possible. Hitbox was born and raised in the FGC, and we know what it means to work out of a garage with no funding. Yes, all of us who actually make shit is making things out of our garage or our homes. We're not major corporations here. Give me a break. <sighs> we also understand the continued ups and downs that come with company growth. Hitbox as a company ourselves may have grown since our founding in 2011, but in the gaming peripheral industry, we are still considered a small growing business who experiences new challenges every day. Creating the three licensed categories based on merit, not size, is our solution to work with as many deserving companies as possible as they scale and grow. The level system, black, red, and gold, is a way to signify to customers which are, of our licensees have met the standards that best represent Hitbox's core values. All officially licensed products, regardless of level, are required to meet certain standards to participate in the program. When customers see that a particular licensee is on a different level, they can rest assured that what they are buying is Hitbox approved. Gross, I don't care about that. All right, uh, red, black, and gold. All right, where the fuck does this actually say what they are? Red, black, and gold determine the range of benefits and support. While still scaling to their highest potential, three... These levels will ensure that growing community organizations are not excluded based on their size and resources. 
They also grant licensees the opportunity to move up levels as they continue to grow. For customers, these levels represent quality and consistency. Red is the standard starting level. Black is the next up, providing quality and consistency. And gold is for licensees that go above and beyond, both as organizations and in supporting the community. <sighs> that means nothing. All of that was junk. That was all platitudes. All right. Paradise Arcade controllers are premium in quality, and their dedication to the customers have remained true over their many years in the community. Their two leverless products are Gold Level and Hitbox Licensing Program, the M-Press and the M-Press Nano. Uh, I like Brian and Susan. I think they're good people, but I've seen a lot of issues with both of those pop up on my Twitter feed. Um, okay, so all of this was a lot of nothing burger, in my opinion. The red, black, and gold really mean nothing. Um, all of the things I've read about this on Hitbox from their official replies have been nothing burgers, and they don't actually have ways to put everybody in various categories. So, yeah, this is basically trash. Anyone who pays for a license from Hitbox is a fool. That's, um, that's my, th my thought, because they didn't clearly define anything. They didn't show or share the patent numbers. They don't have anything that says this is why we, we did a patent or um, what it means and why we think we're protecting it, nor does it say, hey, we applied for this in 2011 or 2012. I can't remember the exact dates. It was granted on this date, and we have been enforcing it this entire time because guess what? They haven't been. They absolutely haven't been. And if I look at my email, uh, I'm not going to show you the email. I'm not going to read it out because... It, um, uh, it doesn't matter. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, so back in 2013, here's an email that, um, another company reached out to the hitbox guys on and said hey i'd like to do an led silenced version of your stick any interest in collaboration on this hey those leds look really sick i haven't seen any leds mods work with a ball top before so that means it could definitely work for the hitbox directional buttons as well as for collaboration i don't know what i could really offer i know it will look beautiful but i won't be able to actually make a product that uses leds for some time and i can't tease something that gorgeous that I'm not able to offer either. We're still a small company and we've been trying to look our best to lower costs to make hitboxes more affordable to spread the idea. Thanks for the email. All right, lame. All right, let me see if I can find the other one. Let's see. <sighs> All right, I know I have it. I just saw it a little while ago because I looked it up. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, gotcha. Um, so back in 2014, I did my first Panzer with the all button layout. So I reached out to them and I said, Hey guys, I wanted to reach out and chat with you regarding the Panzer fight stick with the hitbox layout. I'm sure you've seen the Panzer fight sticks and the various layouts I've made available. One of which has been the hitbox layout as a case maker. I wanted to give you them to give maximum flexibility to the community. Well, with the cases I make so that the appeal of getting a custom case with exactly what you wanted was high. I noticed that other stick manufacturers and panel makers such as one, two, and three, I'm not going to call them out. <clears throat> have been making sticks with the hitbox layout for a while. And honestly, I didn't think about reaching out to you when, I, when the, fir the first customer asked me for a Panzer with the hitbox layout. It wasn't intentional, but an oversight on my part, especially since I own a hitbox. <clears throat> yeah, I bought one. It wasn't that good. Here's some background. Uh, I initially started making the Panzer to make controller builds easy for super guns. 
for myself because I got tired of having imprecise cuts and having to spend a lot of time making something work and being dissatisfied. Didn't think about selling them commercially until someone asked for one. Eventually I modified the design to house a PS360 Plus and a USB or, or RJ45 passer because again, someone asked if they could use it as a platform for a console stick. Every iteration has come about because someone asked about making a new feature or layout available, which has created a lot of interesting options for folks. I understand the original layout was yours and I didn't intentionally try to take sales from you guys since I typically sell only case versus completed sticks to sell. In the rare instances that I do get a request to build them out, they're more expensive than a proper hitbox from you. I always remind people of this so they know they aren't saving money by buying it from me <clears throat> and that they should buy it from you if they want the lower cost stick and to support the hitbox team. I'd like to continue selling the Panzer with the hitbox layout as an option and want to make sure you guys benefit in some way. I definitely don't want to affect your sales negatively because your layout is a great layout and people love that people love and you should reap the benefits of implementing it. And then, sorry it's taken so long to get back to you. I really appreciate you reaching out and talking to us about this. It's much more than we've heard from anyone else. We're still a really small company, so it means a lot. Thank you. None of us are opposed personally to custom builders putting together hit boxes if they're requested, but we're doing our best to survive like everyone else. So we'd appreciate if it's not advertised on websites. Officially, we can't condone it, but I'm not gonna deny it either. There you go. <clears throat> I don't, and then up my reply, thanks for getting back to me. I don't actively advertise the hitbox layout. This was back in 2014, so it's been a while. Uh, although I do post pictures of it, of most, if not all of my custom cases that I put out, I definitely don't want an endorsement from you guys. I understand that it's a tough world in the FGC and that we're all trying to design, build quality stuff. Endorsing competition even a little bit isn't the key to survival. And then I sent them some links of some cases I built back in 14. Um, and then I showed them one that I was bringing off to Evo uh, that year or the following year, I forget. Uh, and then I said, hey, you can see all the stuff I do at my Facebook page. Here's the link. It's more than just fight sticks. I try and dabble in all sorts of fun engineering things. Again, for, thanks for getting back with me. A big fan of building good goodwill amongst vendors instead of creating a us versus them atmosphere. Plus we can all learn a lot of cool stuff from each other. And then, um, they said, if any, anyone comes our way looking for custom work, I'll send them your way. I get folks looking for lefty hitboxes or something like that, uh, similarly regularly, and I can't help them out. And there was some discussions about my trips to Japan at the time. So, all right, let's, uh, now that we've gone through all that, let's look at uh, um, what's in the chat here. All right, FB Prime, ain't hitbox just made out of a thin sheet metal bent in China PCB? Uh, well, it is a metal case yes uh, minor metal cases too uh, they use thinner metal though um, it's all pretty sharp in a lot of places on the inside and uh, it's uh, kind of flimsy in my opinion uh, figgles hitbox used to be worth it when there was very little options like five years ago now they've just been left behind uh, <laughs> region of origin that was just a lot of marketing speak so what, now people can't call their controller Hitbox? Yeah, that's always kind of been the case. Hitbox, Hit Space Box is a company name. I think that's trademarked. So you probably have never been able to say that, but it's one of those things that copyright and trademark is only as good in American law as those who are enforcing their trademark or copyright. So that's why like, um, if you go to a restaurant and you order a Coke, but they only serve Pepsi and they say, uh, they say, is Pepsi okay? They have to say that because Coke vehemently defends their brand and they will sue restaurants if they try to pass off Pepsi as Coke. I mean, they don't want dilution of their product. That makes sense. Um, they tried to make it sound like any loverless design is infringing their patent. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I don't, I, I agree with your statement and I don't think all loverless designs infringe on their patents. Um, I posted something up on Twitter a couple, or like last night that I saw someone else post, something from like 2006, and there was an all-button controller in, I think, Korea uh, with, you know, some crazy layout, so it's not, it, it wasn't a new idea. Um, let's see, and then, yeah, so... Yeah, everyone basically stopped saying hitbox and called them all button controllers or leverless designs because um, if you remember, I think it was about two years ago now, um, there was some, some situation where I guess hitbox finally got frustrated with junk food arcades uh, sales and their popularity, which is, you know, 
they serve a very specific market. It's not my market. It's not something I'm super interested in, but you know, they're very successful and that's great for them. <clears throat> and then um, they, uh, they, I think sued junk food and then junk food countersued, I think. Um, at the same time, I think um, the guy who made Flatbox got a nasty letter from junk food about his Flatbox being too similar to theirs. I don't know all the details there, but it was a whole lot of mess and it's kind of died down and not a lot of media coverage has come out of it in the uh, recent months, so, or even for the last year. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on there. <clears throat> but it, you know, it's definitely, um, it's kind of like they let people do this for so long without an answer to it or without them, you know, actually trying to protect whatever patent they have or if they think they have that's defensible that it's almost now like you know why everyone calls things being xeroxed instead of like being copying um you know like copies or like people calling everything that you blow your nose with kleenex instead of tissue paper you know shit like that so um it's interesting it's very interesting uh, bottom line, I'm not paying for a license. That shit's silly. Uh, and like I've said in my Discord, if they want to sue a retired Navy officer who, you know, runs a business out of his basement making arcade sticks because he's been doing it for almost as long as they have and it started as a hobby, then you know what? I guess bring it and I'll just simply say, cool. I'll out them, I'll publicly shame them, I will have a fire sale, and I will close down. Because that's the kind of drama I don't need in my life. And if that's how they want to try and get to the top, by alienating everybody, pissing off the community, and forcing people out of business through this silliness, then, you know, on them, good. I don't care. I'm too old to deal with that shit now. <clears throat> Alright, I'm just putting this bottom pad on the Panzer, because I did say we're going to build a Panzer. And damn it, we're going to do it. All right, Panzer IV XL. Yeah, I I don't know. <laughs> I have all the designs done, but I kind of shifted over to making the new Uni chassis, and I've kind of put that on the back burner because, you know, I keep... I'm running out of space, so i got to really prioritize um, what what's next in the uh, hopper and I try to uh, um, uh, you know, I end up focusing on things that like just get me super excited and right now just a bigger version of this is exciting but it's not exciting yet I don't know <clears throat> and it's a huge amount of money uh, to invest in every time I do a new run of things because like you know you got to manufacture so many things, wiring and chassis and 800 different types of panels because you want to have everything available. And then, you know, do I make and invest in a bunch of things like bezels and stuff like that that will be needed to be made? I mean, yeah, I do want to do all that stuff, but at the same time, I don't have an endless supply of cash because I just don't sell a lot of stuff on a daily basis to, you know, be able to take all that and make huge investments in all the, all the time. So while I do pretty well, um, and I'm very grateful for the, the business that I do, uh, it, um, it gets difficult. All right. So I just attached the bottom pad there. That's what I was doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that off back here behind me and let's go ahead and grab the front <clears throat> and let's go. All right. Sounds like now that the FGC had a boost in popularity, they want to make a bigger piece of the pie with this. Yeah, that's possible. And I don't think things like the partnership between junk food and iBuyPower really helped anything. I think that just um, got them all like riled up, like, hey, why don't we have that? And it brought a lot of attention to Junk Food Arcade. And, you know, there you go. They're probably upset about that. Because I think what will end up happening is if everyone thinks in junk food or all these little guys get so big and popular that um, uh, people are going to start thinking, oh, they were the originals and then maybe Hitbox is the, the, 
the second comer coming to the party. I don't know. Um, I would be worried about that, but it is what it is. <clears throat> All right. I think my aunt's here. I hear people upstairs. and I'm not going up there. I'm going to continue doing this. All right. So what we're doing is we're just getting the USB installed here with uh, one of my surrounds. As they come into the basement, I'll have to switch off the mic for a minute. So yeah, there you go. That's kind of like the situation right now. And thank you for the uh, note on the unit chassis. I appreciate it. I do think it looks good. I can't wait for the unit chassis Aegis MX. That's going to be awesome. That one I should have tomorrow, the prototype, which is exciting. All right. Now, if we look at this whole situation from a business lens, um, because I would be foolish to have gone, gotten an MBA and not look at things through business lenses, I understand what they're doing. However, they should have been doing this from the beginning. They should have been protecting their property right away. Um, because if, if a court upholds or would uphold their uh, design patent, then they have a case. And they would have shown that they've been defending their work since the beginning. However, that email that y'all just heard that I got back in 2014, 10 years ago, would show that they were not feverishly protecting their IP or their copyrights or trademarks because so many people were calling them their stuff hitbox, one word, not two. And um, so many popped up over, over the time. <clears throat> so I think there's some erosion of trademark and patent protection there. I'm not saying it's justified or correct, but one, if got, they got sued, could make an argument there, I think. And so then, you know, I think after the whole like thing with junk food popped up, that's when everyone really took the hard line stance of these are loverless controllers. They're all button controllers. I prefer calling them all button controllers um, because they didn't want to catch the ire of Hitbox the company and have them potentially sue them. And again, I don't know what happened with the junk food arcade situation. Um, everyone's been very private about that, which is probably smart. Um, but guess what? You know, I think it's been about a year and a half or almost two years and junk food's still making their stuff. So I think maybe the court case got tossed out or it's ongoing or they settled and it's been quiet. I'm not sure. All conjecture on my part, so I don't take that for gospel, but it is what it is. And now you're seeing things that are enabled by like the GP2040 CE stuff um, coming out every day. It started, I think, I'm not going to say how it started, I don't know. The flat box is the first one I remember coming out. Um, and then a bunch of derivatives have come out, and then. Um, uh, some open source versions are out and stuff like that. So like, you know, that has made it super easy because you can start with some open source designs, remix it and come up with some stuff on your own. Plus it's super well documented. It's, to be honest with you, once you kind of figure out how to design circuit boards and stuff like that, which again, it's not easy. It's that's, I'm trivializing it a little bit. Um, it's easy to kind of come up with some stuff on your own. There's so much information out there these days about how to use CAD and how to use, you know, free tools like KiCad and stuff like that. Um, everything is a lot more accessible now. There's a lot more information out there. So there's just, it, it's real easy for, for this stuff to come out. And so <clears throat> it, it makes a lot of sense. It's a maker's haven right now. So yeah, it's, um, 
it's definitely been an interesting couple of days, if you if if I do say so myself. Um, I think that uh, this is going to cause a lot of backlash in the community, or, or well, I mean, it already has caused a lot of backlash in the community, and I think that it's going to make people take pause on whether they work with the company hitbox. If I was running a tournament and someone and and they were like one of the sponsors of the event, I might want to distance myself from that just because of the blowback and the negative the negativity associated with it. Um, just my thoughts. As far as someone trying to trademark all button controllers, I, I, I think that ship has left the station. If, any, if anyone tried to trademark that, uh, it would definitely not hold up because everyone's been using that phrase for a while. You can't trademark something that's in the open domain. It, I don't think. I'm pretty sure, certain. <clears throat> okay. Next. All right, let's see. Let's flip this back up here. Uh, let's go ahead and install the circuit board. We're going to install the universal fusion board, like I said earlier. <clears throat> cool. The one thing that's interesting is that very first email that I read about someone reaching out and saying, hey, I'd like to make a silent version of your stick with some LEDs and stuff like this. You know, let's collaborate. And they were like, nah, we're not nimble enough for that. That's, uh, that's interesting. And uh, kind of funny to me. But it is what it is. And clearly now they are obviously looking to partner and uh, work with people because, you know, they've got a licensing program now. So, yeah. <sighs> All right, what are, what are your thoughts? I'm interested in, in y'all because uh, I've said my, my two pieces. And y'all have probably read my thoughts. I posted them on Twitter, you know, as one good businessman does. When money gets involved, people's gremlin sides come out. Yeah, that's fair. Oops. Fine bros. I've, I keep hearing about those guys. I have no idea who they are. Uh, apparently, I'm, I'm not cool enough to know all this stuff on the old internet. I really have spent a lot of time like away from the computer. I spend more time, you know, packing and shipping orders and sitting in front of, you know, my computer at work doing non-fight stick stuff that recently when I've gotten home, I'm like, I don't want to deal with any of this. <laughs> so I'm just going to sit at home and avoid the computer and the phone. I mean, it's gotten so bad that I literally have been playing Game Boy Red, or uh, excuse me, Pokemon Red on my funny game or funny playing Game Boy uh, Color FPGA system. Fine mode bros, they got greedy and didn't account for the backlash. What I don't even know who they are. What did what did they do? What did they make? What did they get greedy about? Oh, hitbox, gotcha. Well, it sounds like you know it. It sounds like they don't have a proper. Um, uh, marketing team, and they 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 didn't actually do any any analysis of what they were trying to accomplish with the licensing program, and it obviously blew up in their face. As far as fine bros, oh the reaction channel guys, oh yeah yeah, yeah. screw that too. Although, I'll tell you, a lot of this reaction channel stuff is stupid. Uh, I was on Facebook the other day because I'm an old guy. Not a boomer, just an old guy. And um, this woman was, like, watching, like, live... 
not live, like court TV type stuff. Like basically like she found some judge that is pretty funny in the courtroom with her, like her reactions and stuff to like some of these cases. And she always ends up hearing like crazy cases. It's almost like real life judge Judy and or people's court. Yeah. I'm that old judge Wapner. Anybody? And, uh, <clears throat> She literally was just on the side of the screen, just what, like, it was like a split screen thing. And all she was doing was sitting there very obviously watching the video and occasionally her eyebrows would move. And I'm like, this is the dumbest shit that I've ever seen. How are these people popular? And then I realized I'm probably not the target audience for shit like that. Sorry, I'm cussing a lot today. If you guys have sensitive ears, the, uh, the submariner in me's on full, full display. <clears throat> I only have huge zip ties. This is annoying. Looks like I'm going to have to place an order for some more or find my box. Yeah, <laughs> I try, I try, I try to keep it, uh, PG-13 usually on stream. Um, I try my hardest to uh, not drop the F-bomb as much as I, nor I do in real life. Um, I don't always succeed. But apparently today I'm succeeding because y'all think it's not that much swearing. So good. <laughs> All right. Ugh. Cool. All right, so we got that done. Um... What are we gonna do next? Let's do the panel. All right. Actually, before we do the panel, we are going to, we got the bezel, we're gonna use a bezel. I just cleaned up everything in here, not making a huge mess. I really do like this red and black color scheme. Um, I really dislike the University of Georgia, which, has made this super popular. <clears throat> but I think all of us as children at one point were like, ooh, um, red and black, that looks cool. Because it, it does. Black with most bold colors looks really good, so. All right, we're gonna put a Sega Player 2 panel in here like so. Push that down. Cool. And then we're gonna grab our printed plexi overlay. I think that looks pretty good. And let's go ahead and get some screws installed. Now this still has the protective film. That's why it looks kind of like, ugh. Um, don't worry about that. It's all good. We're going to peel it off here in a minute, but um, I want to get the lever installed and stuff before I do that. This is some older artwork that I had I commissioned <clears throat> and uh, it, um, I, w I adapted it to the Panzer IV. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. I almost went with a black case and red accent pieces, but I instead chose to go. I, I want everyone, I've run out of black stock pretty frequently. Um, this is not the new K-hole. This is a standard... Uh, sand it looks big because that's like a gray color. So it looks like it's bigger. The K-hole panels over there getting ready to be shipped out. Uh, I sold out day one, which is great. So I'm getting more made. Yeah, you like that. I spent a bunch of time doing that because I was like, you know, everyone asked for this and I put up the the guide and, and whatnot, and I haven't seen anyone except for um, Chris do it down in Texas. And uh, I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put those on. So I found a vector of placed from on Adobe stock of all places of PlayStation iconography. And I just used those. All right. So this is going to fall off anyway, so we're going to take that off. I'll put one dust washer there. 
And then I'll grab the lever hardware over here. Don't mind the loud noises, sorry about that. To the trash floor, if you will. Yeah, after I get done building this, I gotta take some photos. I'm gonna list it for sale on the website. And then I got some orders to pack. I got some plexi to cut for folks. So pretty, pretty busy rest of my day, actually. I might look at uh, making this available as a stock piece of artwork. I think I have one for another Sega Player 2 layout already done because I, I had to fill up the sheet for the last printed Plexi run, so. And I'm gonna get some of the new uh, Vaporware inspired or Vapor Wave inspired artwork done that uh, Drew up in Canada did for me. I'm pretty excited about that. That's one of the reasons why I'm doing a short fused printed Plexi run right now is because I want to get those made up and uh, do a build with it. All right. Let's see if I can... That ain't going to work. All right. <clears throat> I keep telling myself I'm going to drill a hole in my desk so that I have a place to put the shaft through while I'm building sticks so that I can avoid overhanging it from my my uh, my table here my workbench son of a gun Yeah, I need to do an order of, like, another... I, I made an order for, like, 10,000 zip ties probably three or four years ago, <laughs> and I finally ran out of those zip ties. So right now I've got these big, fat zip ties that uh, are really meant for, like, cable managing a bunch of HDMIs and stuff like that. That's what I originally bought them for, but, eh, they'll work for now. All right, so now what I'm doing is I'm just making sure the screws are just, just loose enough that I can still manipulate the position of the lever because you, know, you want it to be right in the middle, squared up inside. That looks pretty good. Now we can tighten this down. I know you can't see this because it's off. off camera. Sorry about that. Um, Velcro ties work really well, unfortunately for me. Um, I just, I like, I like using proper zip ties for stuff like this because like this wire, for example, that's never going, I mean, it should never go anywhere. And if it, you have to take it out, you're going to have to take the whole thing out anyways. Um, but if you swap the panel to do, you know, whatever, a different layout or whatever, you really only need to disconnect this one cable because it come this will all come off with it all right let's go ahead and flip this back over now all right now we get to uh loosen these screws because we need to peel this plexi um the uh protective film off before we put the buttons and stuff in so to do that i like to uh well, use some, use some tape and it, there you go, it grabs it. And this is like a spray film that we put on. So now we can take this one, we'll loosen this one up. Now we can tighten it down. And put this screw back in. See, it looks a lot better once the, uh, once the protective film comes off. Then we're just going to loosen these as we go. Uh oh. Oh, 
Oh no. What's going on here? Ooh. We can't use this plexi. That looks like crap. Right here, look, there's some something happened, like a chemical reaction with uh, with the acrylic and the spray. So we're gonna have to take this off. I'm gonna have to reach out to my partners on this one and show them what happened because that is unacceptable. If uh, anyone got a printed plexi in the mail and it looked like that and they didn't email me and tell me about it, I'd be frustrated because this is not quality. And you can't really tell until you peel this off. And we put that on before we cut it. So it's, you know, big and batch. And as you're kind of going through and looking, you know, you do the cursory look. So, ooh, frustrating. Very frustrating. Let's go ahead and take this and set that off to the side so we can talk to some folks about it. Fortunately, I made two. Yeah, I can show you guys that a little bit closer. There's a um, protective film on the back of this one. Gotta peel that off. See, peel the back off, white, white print on the background. Um, yeah, so right here, it's hard to see. You can, well, maybe you can see it a little bit right here. That's not good. Um, I don't know why it did that. That's strange because it's like it's on this top part. I might be able to like buff that out. So this may just be, I don't know. That's weird, but we're not going to use it. I'm kind of glad that happens um, sometimes because you're like, oh, that's not right. I mean, clearly I, oh, that looks way better. Clearly I hope that would never happen to any stuff that went out and I'm glad it only happened to one that was here in the shop, but <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Sometimes like when you, when you're cleaning it up and isopropyl reacts with it. That's right. That's kind of like a little haze that it can create. Thank you. I appreciate that. I also like the little icons for the, the things. Um, this is like the number one question I get is what button does what? And I, I try to communicate it very well on the, on the Panzer page. And I think there's a pinned post on uh, the um, the discord and stuff but yeah you should totally do that if you want I can share this with you um, this part up here I'll put it on a, a pretty standard setup I guess I could probably just put this up and make it available for everybody yeah maybe I'll do that I'll do it in illustrator and I'll post it up as an illustrator file so that people can use it. All right, yeah, that looks pretty good, right? Look at that. Cool. This is my my little added flare here. Panzer fight stick, cool beans. All right, now let's go ahead and plug these buttons in. I'm using snap-ins. Don't uh, don't hate me. I don't mind using snap-ins. I like them as long as I don't ever have to change them. Ah, oh, Photoshop only. Gross. Now I know why I get angry with your art. You've been submitting so much good stuff, but I always have to convert it over to the Illustrator. You get the angry, angry fist. Or the, the dumpling hand of anger. I started doing this when I get mad from when I lived in Italy. And then I went to Korea for a, a work trip. And I went, ugh, 
And the interpreter said, why did you make the angry dumpling hand? What does that mean in America? And I was like, oh, um, that's actually something I picked up when I lived in Italy. And it's just like, you do it when you get annoyed or upset with something. And she's like, oh, no, did I make you mad? I was like, no, 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 I was just mad about the thing. Now, I'll tell you, Illustrator has a purpose. Um, Photoshop has a purpose. I actually finally started using them at my real job, doing some data visualization stuff. Um, I use a lot of R uh, now to do data analysis and create graphs and stuff, but R's output is usually like, meh. It's not great. So I always end up pulling it into um, Illustrator is you know because it'll output a PNG, and then I'll um, I'll end up redrawing a bunch of stuff in Illustrator over top of my data sets to make it look better, and then um, that actually may have changed my job position a little bit because I know how to do all that stuff. All right, yeah, I think that looks pretty good. What do y'all think? Huh? Ooh, pretty fancy. All right, now let's go ahead and. Flip this guy over. Yeah, it's amazing like when you live overseas or you do things or you're, you're around a bunch of other cultures or, or whatever, how much you end up picking up from them doing, you know, just by being around. Um, I started doing the mm, mm, because they do that in Japan a lot when you're talking. Uh, or at least that's, I noticed, like, that's like the way at least some of the, the naval officers I worked with made it so that you knew they were paying attention to what you were saying. And I thought that was interesting. It's almost like their version of, uh-huh, uh-huh, yep, mm-hmm, uh mm-hmm. -huh, uh -huh. um, so I started doing that. Drives my wife nuts. All right. And here we go. Let's wire this up. I always start from the left because I know that's kick four. And if you guys have watched me do this in the past, you know I don't try and mash it down right away. I just get it on to the, the tabs and just move down and then I'll flip the panzer up on its side and uh, push them all the way in. Because if you try and push them all the way in, you saw that button was trying to come out, right? <clears throat> so the next thing I got to figure out with my stream setup is I'm going to set up my, I have an ATEM Mini Pro. It takes four HDMI ins. And um, I think I'm going to hook up my laptop, have a HDMI out from the laptop to the ATEM and use it as like a second monitor because I can monitor it over here on my monitoring monitor, if that makes sense. I can see all four camera feeds into the monitor. So that way, like when I want to test controllers after I'm done building them, I can just click, uh, you know, button two on my ATEM, switch the camera. It leaves, everything is, is but just shifts the, uh, shifts the uh, input to the, the next one. Um, and then that way I don't have to worry about like window shares and stuff like that. All right, cool because they don't always work real well and you can't really plan for them. I have an extra ATEM. I have the original ATEM Mini when they came out that I actually just replaced with this Mini Pro because I wanted to be able to do HDMI monitoring of all four inputs at one time. That's why I have this monitor up here. I gotta sell that thing. All right, so now I stand this up, and this is where I, I put, I hold the buttons over here on this side, you know, one at a time, and as I'm holding it, I come through and I press the, the tabs the rest of the way down. That way I know they're fully seated. Don't mind my bald head getting in the way. Then 
in. Let me flip this down like this. Let me actually, I'm going to go look. I've got, yeah, cool. I found my box of junk parts. And in said box of junk parts, I've got little zips. All right. So now I can do proper proper cable management. Okay, so what I always do is I start from this side and I kind of bunch the wires together like this and then I add a zip. Like so. Okay. What I'm doing is then I just kind of move down and I create little bundles with offshoots. So I get this close to like punch one, kick one, zip tie that down, and look, and you're starting to see a nice little trunk emerge. And then we'll do, right after punch one, kick one comes off, we'll do another one right here. And we'll get it close to punch two, kick two. <clears throat> and then a third one here between punch, or next to punch three, kick three. Now, if you've never built one of these before, I would say test your controller before you do this, just to make sure you have it all hooked up properly. I'm pretty confident I got it right. I've built at least one or two of these in my day. All right, and so now you have a nice clean wiring set up here, and then you can come back through like this and just trim your tails. Don't be like me and cut any of the wires because I definitely did that yesterday as I was cable managing all my stream setup stuff. I cut right through an HDMI cable. I was so mad. <clears throat> Fortunately, I had many more. All right, I'm just gonna add a couple here this is unnecessary. I'm not zip tying the cable for the lever to the aux cables. I'm just adding a couple zips to keep it clean. All right. Now that looks nice and tidy. So that's good. One more cable to hook up and that's the USB. So I checked this and the, when I first built it, you always want to make sure that this is coming off this way. And so that way you can, like that, that just kind of lays there, good to go. That all kind of fits down. I've already tightened the ball top. So now we have a fully built out Panzer fight stick. Look at that. How exciting. All right. Now let me grab a USB cable here. Where are my branded USB cables? Ah, here we go. This will go in the package with this on the website. If you guys haven't seen these, these are, they've got the Jason's Customs Gator Eye on them on both ends. One here on the C side, one side on the A side. All right. I'm just go ahead and plug that in there. Don't mind me, joy. Not CPL. And plug this in here. Cool. We got the LEDs. It's showing up as an Xbox One for Windows. Let's go ahead and hit properties. Oh, it's so quiet. Yeah. Turbo's on, good. I like it. Perfect, there you go. Functional, clean, easy to build. An hour and three minutes in and like the first 25 minutes of it, we talked about uh, the crazy hitbox shenanigans. So how about that? And we had to switch out the Plexi because uh, the one was damaged which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. So now what we do is we just take the two halves, line them up, slide them down, make sure that no wires get caught between them. Pretty easy. And then we'll just go ahead and sigh because we are finished and connect up the screws that hold the halves together. I'm actually surprised red doesn't sell more uh, because it always looks so nice. Like you can do a really good build 
Um, I'm excited to see the first yellow builds. I think a couple of them have gone out. Uh, I don't know when they're going to be delivered, but hopefully soon because I want to see some nice yellow builds. And if I don't see any in the next week, I'm just going to build one and take one out of stock. And then there will only be four available in the wild, which I think that means there will be only two left if I take one off the shelf because I think uh, two have already been sold. <clears throat> Actually, Omega, you've got one. Has your box arrived yet? Or your box is because I think I had to split your orders up into two. Um, so here's the deal with the uni chassis. Uh, I'm going to do them in black and gray initially. If I do any other colors, they are going to be one time run type things because I have to get so many made, uh, to keep them, uh, cost appropriate. Um, it's not like, you know, getting something injection molded where, you know, after I make the mold and it's only, uh, um, you know, 50 cents to a dollar per unit I make after that because I already have the mold made. It's, you know, each one gets milled and every time I set up the anodizing, then, you know, that's a separate thing. So we got to make sure that we're doing it right and smartly. Um, in terms of the layouts right now, we're uh, um, going to do Sega Player 2. We're going to do Aegis MX, and we're going to do an all-button controller that uh, it's going to have extra like buttons cut into it, but because you have to use a plexi, you can get um, different, you know, certain buttons not cut out, cut out, so that that way we can get a couple layouts out of a single panel, if that makes sense. Um, ultimately, what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to convert all of the unit chassis stuff to MX style so that you don't actually have to buy buttons and stuff. You can just get caps and stuff from me because I'm getting caps made for ABMX, which will be, uh, which will work with Aegis MX, uh, Sega Player 2 MX, and all that stuff. So um, it should be pretty good. I don't like having to spend $8 for a mechanical button if I don't have to. So, there you go. All right, how's that look? I think it looks pretty good. I like it. I like it a lot. Cool. All right, well, there you go. That's the uh, Panzer build for the day. That was our discussion on Hitbox and all the history there with some interesting raids. Um, I'm glad that I still have those emails. Um, so we'll see, we'll see if Hitbox retreats from this crazy crusade they are now on. Um, we'll see, we will see, but, uh, anyways, I'm going to go take some pictures of this. I'm going to list this one from the website. Um, remember if you are a loyalty member, AKA you've spent any money at the shop, you get, we'll get up to 15% off of this stick once it goes live, depending on how much you've, you've bought. Um, Omega, you basically get things for free at this point, I'm pretty sure. So I appreciate y'all tuning in. Until next time, I'm Jason. Deuce. <laughs>